That story was a little exaggerated. There's been some research done, and he didn't have 52. He had 44, and they won by 24. <laughs> so Jeremy Roenick still lost the bet. But my question to you is this. How can a human being play 36 holes of golf, drink 10 beers, and then score 44 in the NBA later that night? Sometime I dream that he is me like Mike. So let me gather around the campfire, boys and girls. Let me okay. tell you guys something. Greatness exudes itself in a lot of ways. And the legend of Michael Jordan, of course, on the floor, he's the black cat. He's Jesus in gym shoes. He's air. He even played basketball with his tongue out. Just think about it. Played basketball with his tongue out. But you know what made him an actual icon? That he didn't go to bed at 9 or 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> and we all knew it, OK? That's just one story. What about the times that he would be in the casino, OK, with a stogie, win, lose, or draw, and still know he got a game the next day or the same day and come out and do work? And I'm not the person to make any allegations, but the Utah flu game, there's been an urban legend that he was more than sick during that game. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, you're not saying he wasn't sick, but maybe there are some other elements that he was dealing with as well. <laughs> so, you know, it's a different era than it is now. I think the players are so much more health conscious. But was this kind of behavior not commonplace, but did it occur from time to time in the 90s and the early 2000s? I always give the modern day athlete credit for something. We worked out. That means you pick and choose when you do it. That means sometimes you have an off season. These guys train. It's 24-7, 365. And that's not just in the gym. It's nutrition. It's a lot of other things that come with trying to make sure that they maximize their ability to be successful on the floor. But don't think that that took away from the greatness of Michael Jordan. There were certain players that wouldn't be effective if they went to bed before midnight. I remember times in my career, I was trying to figure it out. Like, oh, I went to bed at 10, that was awful. <laughs> I went to bed at three, yeah, I like that. <laughs> so I wasn't a great player, so I was trying to figure it out for 13 years. MJ knew who he was from the beginning. Allen Iverson, you think he was going to bed at 10 o'clock at night? He's no, I think he was going to bed NBA. at 10. He was going to bed at 10, just 10 in the morning. That's what he's going hey, to bed. Hey, man, let me tell you something. The beauty about the league then, too, is you'll fly into a town, and your name will be on a flyer that you ain't even know about. You're like, hosted by such and such and such and such from the NBA team. And you're like, cool. Got some built-in action. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All I got to do is go shake hands and kiss babies, and they going to give me a bottle? Nowadays, you tweet, hey, what's going on, Chicago? I'm going to be in town. Tell me where the great restaurants. Then it was just a different way to have fun in Champagne and Campaign. Those are beautiful days in the NBA. So you said earlier that you were trying to figure out your, your, your prime conditioning, what time to go to bed, you know, how hard to Champagne and Campaign. When you knew you were going to have to defend Michael Jordan or play against Michael Jordan, did you treat those games differently? When he was with the Bulls, yeah. When he's with the Wizards, no. <laughs> because earlier in my career, you got to think about it. The first couple of years I was in the league, the only people that was winning championships was Hakeem and MJ, period. Mm -hmm. That's it. And so Hakeem won two and MJ won three. That's the first five years of my career. And when we got a chance to play against them in the playoffs, that year, they won seven games. We won six. So we weren't far off. And for us to have a double-digit lead in the second quarter, and then Mike and Scotty and Rodman started to lock down and take the ball from us, oh, man, the night before, I was in bed at 11. No question. Room service at 9, trying to be a student of the game. But, you know, you got to pay homage to the all-time great because if he had the exposure to information that these players have, 
he would still champagne and campaign because he enjoys life. And he would average 45 in today's game. Book it. 45. If James Harden averages 37, 38, Michael Jordan would average average 45. So, Jalen, a lot of the stories about Michael Jordan off the court involve some wagers. And I've heard a lot about NBA players and the different wagers they make. Charles Barkley told a story where he had to get out of the way because Michael Jordan was going to take a $300,000 putt. What is the most you have ever wagered on something silly with your teammates or another NBA player? Bet on everything. Like, in the NBA locker room, you bet on anything. On the plane, you bet on anything. You playing games, you playing in between, you playing boo ray, you playing poker, shooting craps. Like, anything. Because you're in a competitive environment with millionaires that you know whoever wins or loses a bet can actually pay the bet. So that becomes the competition. So I do recall multiple times where I lost bets, but I can't front and don't want to put any names out there, but I was on the winning side of a lot of bets that I had to find ways to make sure I got paid for. You still, you still have some accounts receivable out there? Yeah, oh, definitely. I got some accounts <laughs> receivable. I got some receipts, <laughs> for sure. I got some Jaylen. ESPN receipts, too. <laughs> What's up? Thank you so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. Don't forget to download the ESPN app. And if you want more premium content, which you do, make sure that you subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. See you soon.